This is Dr. Hayek. In this video, I'm going to go over question two from the free response part of the 2016 AP Chemistry exam. Now, the question says, a student designs an experiment to study the reaction between uh, sodium hydrogen carbonate and acetic acid. The reaction is represented by the equation above. The student places 2.24 grams of sodium hydrogen carbonate in a flask and adds 60.0 milliliter of 0.875 molar of acetic acid. The student observes the formation of bubbles and that the flask gets cooler as the reaction proceeds. Identify the reaction represented above as an acid-base reaction, precipitation reaction, or redox reaction. Justify your answer. So we should take a look on the equation given. So if I write it again here. Now, what are my options here? It can be precipitation reaction, redox reaction, or acid-base reaction. Now. If this reaction is a precipitation reaction, I should expect to see a solid in the product. Now, since I don't see any solid in the product, it means no precipitate is formed, and therefore, this is not a precipitation reaction. Now, the second option is redox reaction. For this part, I can just check the oxidation numbers of the different elements, and I can see that the oxidation number is not changing for any of the elements and therefore this is also not a redox reaction. So by elimination I can just say that this is an acid base reaction. Let's move on to the next part. The question says based on the information above identify the limiting reactant. Justify your answer with calculations. Now if you take a look on the reaction again now, I should calculate the uh, number of moles of both reactants. So if I find the number of mole of sodium hydrogen carbonate, I have the mass, so 2.24 grams of sodium hydrogen carbonate. I multiplied by the ratio 1 mole over 84.0 grams, which is actually the molar mass. So it's like I'm dividing by the molar mass. And the answer will be 0 0.0267 mole sodium hydrogen carbonate. Now again in here, look at the number of significant figures. The mass is given in three significant figures and the molar mass in three significant figures. So the answer has to be in three significant figures. So 0, 0.0, these are leading zeros, so I don't consider them. So the 267, these are the three significant figures in my answer. Now in a similar way, I can find the number of mole of acetic acid from the volume and the concentration. So I have 60.0 milliliter multiplied by the concentration. So 0 0.875 mole per 1000 milliliter. Now the answer will be 0 0.0525 mole of acetic acid. And again, the answer is given in three significant figures. Since sodium hydrogen carbonate and acetic acid react in one-to-one -one ratio, so the limiting reactant is going to be the one with the smaller number of mole. So in this case, it's the sodium hydrogen carbonate solid. Let's move on to the next question now. The question says, the student observes that the bubbling is rapid at the beginning of the reaction and gradually slows as the reaction continues. Explain this change in the reaction rate in terms of the collisions between reactant particles. So, since as the reaction proceeds, both reactants are consumed and their concentrations decrease. Now, since the concentrations decrease, collisions between reactant particles become less likely as their concentration decrease, thus the reaction rate slows. Now the question asks us to justify it in terms of collisions, but if this wasn't the case, we could use the expression of the rate, and rate equals to K multiplied by the concentration of the reactants, and we could say, since the concentration of the reactant decreases, uh, the rate will decrease as well. 
Now let's move on to the next question. The question says, in thermodynamic terms, a reaction can be driven by enthalpy, entropy, or both. Now, part I, it says, considering that the flask gets cooler as the reaction proceeds, what drives the chemical reaction between sodium hydrogen carbonate and acetic acid? Answer by drawing a circle around one of the choices below. Now the choices are enthalpy only, entropy only, and both enthalpy and entropy. Now the answer is entropy only. Now in part double I, I will be explaining why. In part double I, it says justify your selection in part DI in terms of delta G naught. Now, we know that delta G naught, which is the free energy at standard conditions, is equal to delta H naught minus T delta S naught. Now, for the reaction to be thermodynamically favored, delta G naught should be negative. Now, since the reaction in question is endothermic, since he says the flask gets cooler as the reaction proceeds. So this reaction is endothermic and delta G naught is positive, which does not favor the reaction because it makes the delta G naught more positive. So now, why entropy favors the reaction? Because there are no gases in the reactant side and there is one gas that gets produced in the product side, which is the CO2 gas, delta S naught is positive, which makes the term minus T delta S naught more negative, and so the delta G naught. Let's move on to the next question now. The question says, the hydrogen carbonate ion has three carbon to oxygen bonds. Two of the carbon to oxygen bonds have the same length, and the third carbon to oxygen bond is longer than the other two. The hydrogen atom is bonded to the one of the oxygen atoms. In the box below, I draw a lowest electron dot diagram or diagrams, because we might have more than one, for the hydrogen carbonate ion that is or are consistent with the given information. Now, the lowest electron dot is the following. Now, the two bonds that are equal for between carbon and oxygen are these two. Now, the reason they're equal because we have resonance, and since we have resonance, we can draw the hybrid form, and in the hybrid form, these two bonds, since the double bond once is to the left and another time is to the right, so these two bonds are considered to be the same. Now, the third bond, which is longer than these two bonds, is the single bond between carbon and oxygen, and on that oxygen that's connected to the hydrogen. Let's discuss now the last part in this question. It says a student prepares a solution containing equimolar amounts of acetic acid and sodium acetate. The pH of the solution is measured to be 4.7. The student adds two drops of three molar nitric acid, aqueous, and stirs the sample, observing that the pH remains at 4.7. Write a balanced net ionic equation for the reaction between nitric acid and the chemical species in the sample that is possible for the pH remaining at 4.7. Now, as you can see, this is a solution between a weak acid and the salt of its conjugate base. So this is a buffer solution, and when we add acid to it, we don't expect a big change on the pH. So when we have a buffer solution, it's always good to list the major species in the solution. In this solution, I have the weak acid, sodium ion, which is spectator ion, and the acetate, which is the conjugate base of the acid. Now, when nitric acid is added to the solution, this is a strong acid and is going to mainly give H plus ion. Now, H plus ion cannot react with the acetic acid 
neither with the spectator ion and the only option in this case is to react with the acetate so the net ionic equation can be written using the hydronium H3O plus or using the hydrogen ion so the answer could be one of these two so the acetate plus hydronium H3O plus it gives acetic acid plus water or you could write acetate plus H plus ion gives the acidic acid I hope this video is helpful for you please like share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next question.